Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word Is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. I'm calling for all influencers, platforms, groups of old, miserable burnout, white man worshiping black women to stop promoting your white man worship to the young ladies, to your young sisters. Stop projecting your failures, your miserable life and spirit on these young black women. Okay, because what's going on is it's really getting them tore up out here in the world. You know, take responsibility for your for your failures and what you feel bad about and run with it and try to correct it as opposed to trying to promote something that you know is a lie, that you know is not true to these young black women. It's totally wrong to take advantage of your own people like this. And especially this new generation of young black women who know absolutely nothing about race due to the fact that they were educated in such a way or indoctrinated in schools where they don't teach them this. Cut this mess out, man. Cut this out. We've seen an influx of uh, young black women getting brutally maimed and chopped up to pieces by these white men. And it's very sad to see because I personally think that these relationships or these encounters with these men were only possible due to Caucasian European hypnosis, number one, okay? Because we're dealing with black youth, period, who don't know anything about race. This, this is the youth, period. They don't know anything about race. They were raised to believe that there's no such thing as race. And America is all about race. It was built off of racism and white supremacy, okay? And people, you've seen these stories in the news, where we've seen a, well, maybe not in the news, on uh, new media outlets or private media outlets and things like that on different platforms, we're seeing an influx of these young black women going out with these white dudes, and these dudes are really chopping them up. They're not ready for what these dudes got, man. They're not ready. They have no idea. Okay? And these encounters that they're having with these white men is not some back-in-the-day type, okay, well, she's a prostitute, he's a, he's a weird serial killer type. No, nah, it's none of that. It's none of that. These are young black women who meet these guys with hopes of relationships based off of the nonsense that they're seeing, like this, like this a possibility, okay? And when they get with these dudes, when they meet with these, these, pale, these pale thuggies, you know, these dudes are going in all-out chop-up mode. They're going in all-out chop-up. And if you notice that in many of these stories, the white men are much older than these young black women. They're much older than them, okay? And these young black women who are getting caught up in these situations, in addition to being under the spell of Caucasian European hypnosis, they haven't had enough experiences in life to know how to use discernment yet. A lot of them aren't even street smart. They haven't had enough experiences. Many of them haven't even had a career employment yet. You know what I'm saying? So many of these guys, to us, we can see it, you know, after it, after it happens, you can look at these dudes and say, yo, look at this dude like a straight junkie, you know, a bum brad. You know, you can see all the bum junkie juice just oozing off of these dudes, but these girls can't see it. They can't, they can't see it, y'all. These are new black people. You know what I'm saying? They different. They can't. All they see is the whiteness. All they see is the whiteness because they come in from the jump with this sickness of the heart called Caucasian European hypnosis, which pretty much works as a remote control. When, when our people have this, it guides us in everything we do. It's a sickness of the heart, and it affects the brain. It affects your decision-making, all, all kinds of stuff. You know, they get this, you know, just from being black people in America. A lot of them get it from the parents and the way they were raised. It's in their DNA. A lot of genetic chips from the plantations and things like that. And you have these, these platforms of these old, miserable burnouts who are telling them that they can find 
refuge in a white man and his white success that don't even exist, man. They show these these girls, these platforms with these white dudes, you know, with these black women with, you know, matching full body snowman pajamas on and all this other dumb stuff. They're on there dancing around and acting like they have this joyous swirl life, you know. They show the, 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 the black women with these old dumb duck lip faces and everything and these facial expressions with the white man in the video dancing. He trying to look happy and entertaining, you know what I mean? And, you know, young people are very impressionable. It's all a lie. It's not true. It's all fake. This life does not exist. It's not real. Most of the stuff you see on social media, period, regardless of it, even if it's with a black man and you see him acting like this, act, showing off and going on vacation, it ain't real, man. It definitely ain't real when you see it on these little platforms trying to parade these, these white men as if they're some kind of great people. Yo, listen, it does not exist, young ladies. Don't believe it. And I wish that you old burnouts would stop promoting this on your platform if you really care about your peoples. You're being selfish. You know, and anyway, listen, men don't sit around making entertaining videos and dancing on social media with a black woman anyway. People, that's fake, especially in you know, a white man doing this so dumb mess. It's all fake. They're trying to present something to you and might be trying to get you really caught up. Might be trying to present this to you to take advantage of you and get you caught up. You know what I mean? These girls are watching these videos and they're automatically, well, these young ladies are watching these videos and girls and they automatically think that, oh, this is the life. This is what I need. This is success. And after a while, it burns in their head and they believe that the white man is the answer. But the problem is they just going for any old white man. It's almost like people, remember when you were a kid, you were watching those television shows and sitcoms. We used to watch those shows, seeing white people in the house looking successful, looking like everything is perfect, like they had a solution to all the problems. If something happened on the show, it was always some, you know, solution or whatever, with people putting both hands on their cheeks with their eyes all big, white people. And we're like, oh, man, look at that, yo. You know, they had these old dumb fake problems and these solutions, and you've seen the white people looking all happy, you know, we were watching some dumb shows, y'all. We were watching some d dumb shows. But here's the deal. When we watched those shows, they messed us up in the head in some kind of way. They put us under a spell. A lot of us are still under that spell. Some of us were able to get out of that. And we were able to see at the time that, come on, man, this ain't. But a lot of us can't do that, people. A lot of, a lot, everybody not like you, y'all. Everybody not like you. A lot of our people are still under that spell. Well, that's what's going on when these old miserable burnouts are promoting this fake white man's success, life, and love to these young black women. They're much weaker than we are. They're much slower than you are, okay? The new youth, they're, they're slower, yo. Their brains don't work the same. They have, they're, 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 weak. they're weaker humans all around, and it's not their fault. It's just the world that they're in, and they're seeing this on these platforms and the way their brains process this as, okay, I need to see white men. But the white men aren't looking for these black women, people. The white, it's not real. The white woman will not compete with any other group of women for their, women who, for their men who are successful and taking advantage of being white in America. It, it, they won't. It's not going to happen like that. It's not going to happen like that. OK. But. When they see these things, when these young black women see these things on these platforms, all they see is whiteness and they just jump out the window for whiteness. And that's when they end up, you know, with the only white men or being around the only white men or chatting or making contacts with the only white men who are typically available to them. And most of the time it's going to be some bum brad alcoholic. Thug, heroin, dope fiends, slash type, rotten teeth, psychotic, one of them bummy losers in the white community who they don't even want around anymore. One of those bum losers, one of those bum white men who, white people who are advancing in life and taking advantage of being successful or taking advantage of, you know, being white people, they wouldn't even allow them in there. They would have to eat in the doghouse. 
these tight white people. These are the guys who are contacting these black women on these different outlets, these young black women, and they're going for it. And the problem is, unfortunately, the way things are, these young black women, they don't even understand whiteness. They don't understand the white man. They don't understand race, success. They don't know anything about their history, you know? And that's due to the Caucasian European hypnosis. They'll look past everything. They'll look past everything they see. They'll look past the way these dudes smell, and all they'll see is whiteness. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on. That's why you see these young black women going out with these white dudes who are a lot of times much older, you know? Many of them look creepy. It's like 30 years ago, you wouldn't even see a black woman who would have said, oh, well, I like, you know what I mean? I'm not saying 30 years ago a black woman wouldn't have seen a white dude and be like, oh, well, he looks nice. Nah, I'm talking about 30 years. You would have never seen black women seeing these dirty, nasty, creative face, dusty. I mean, you, you, you see these dudes that a lot of these girls are getting caught up with, Neanderthal looking dope fiend types. Looking dirty. A lot of them just clearly look like junk. You can see the dope fiend all in their face, tattoo on the neck type, you know, in and out of county, every county jail. So, I mean, yo, it's so obvious. But the problem is these young black women, they don't see that all they see is whiteness. And that's just enough. It's a real sickness. It's an illness. You know what I mean? And most of these dudes are hardcore racist. And oftentimes they're just looking for somebody to take care of them or to fulfill a fetish. And a lot of people say, a lot of people on this channel that are in the comments say that they feel as though these are just rituals. Where they just getting in with these girls and they they already, you know, is already like, okay, I have to chop, I have to get a hold of her kidneys. I got to chop her up. I got to do this in this manner, you know. And I'm not going to debate with these people because maybe it's true. And the worst part about this is, and the most dangerous part about these encounters, when they meet these men, and this is what a lot of people aren't looking at or they're not concerned with, is men have superiority and strength over women. So when these young black women are getting with these white dudes, they're doing whatever they want to do. They, it's like taking candy from a baby. Once they, once they see that face that these dudes make and they know, oh, man, I'm in trouble, it's too late. These dudes are out here snapping necks. They've been out in the world. They may have had jobs. You know, they done played sports before. They done, you know, went to jail and did push-ups and came out. They junkies. They done probably worked hard in some places on a farm. Some of them have industrial strength, you know, junkie strength, you know, things like that. They've, they've, they've lived. They've had experiences. And they're just snapping these young girls' necks, you know, doing all kind of things, chopping them with machetes, all kinds of nuttery, man. It's dangerous to be in these situations with a man who you don't know, you don't understand his people, you don't know nothing about him. You can't even pick up on anything because you're under this Caucasian European hypnosis spell and you can't even pick up on it because, and these guys have superiority and strength over you. Okay? And that's why you're seeing so many of these cases with these old Old bummy white dudes, you know, white dudes looking like straight junkies doing this to these young black girls who could have been actually doing something with their lives. This is not these are not like prostitution type situations for them. For the man, it may be something totally different. But these these young ladies are actually looking for this like it's hope. And I'm a little biased because I feel a lot worse when I see them doing this to the young black women who are 19, 21 23, 24, not nothing against the ones who are 40 and 50 and in their late, mid, late 30s enough, you know, it's bad too because nobody has the right to take their life regardless. But when I see the young ones who haven't even, you know, who I know who are educated different, they haven't even lived yet, haven't even had a job, you know what I mean? And I know that they're a lot slower than we were back then, you know what I mean? They're a lot slower than the black women was 25 years ago. It's different now. A lot of these young black women and these black youths, they think racism started with Donald Trump and George Floyd. This is what a lot of them think. It's a shame how this is being presented to them. And yes, there are many black outlets who are presenting this to bamboozle our, our black youth into believing these type things as well. A lot of them never had even, they didn't even have a chance to make a mistake. 
you know, and his old pale monster, this mayo monster, and chopped her up and put her parts amongst the city. You see the stories, people. I mean, there's so many now that it's ridiculous. These dudes are just bums doing this, man. Violent past criminal records, nothing going on. But these old, miserable, burnout women on their platforms, they're promoting this to these girls. They're not telling them to go look at, you know, people like from their history, like Ida B. Wells, Francis Crest Welsing, Sister Soldier, Nanny Helen Barrows, uh, and many others. They're not telling them to look at these type of, uh, read about these women and what they've done. You know, Gwendolyn Brooks. See things that they say. No, nah, they're not doing that. They're telling them to seek refuge in these old bum. Because, again, on these platforms, they're not showing these guys as bums. They're making them look like they're good, decent, upstanding white men who are taking advantage of being white people in America. But the way these girls process it is anything white. They're not, they're not getting these kind of dudes, period. Black women aren't with these kind of successful white. It's not going to happen. There are exceptions to the rule, of course, but it's not going to happen. They're getting these old, old, dirty, dusty junkies. But check this out, people. Here's some information from a white man, a white American man by the name of Grant Cardone. Some people have heard of him, a white man, because sometimes... A lot of our people have to hear things from white people for it to be valid. You know, that white man's ISIS colder thing that a lot of us have, you know. But listen to what this man said. And this is a, a message that you could take and use in these cases for the young black women who may be thinking about doing these things. Here you go. Like this, okay? It goes, brown are the wealthiest income earners and asset owners in America. Brown meaning what? Uh, Indian. Indian, okay. Then it's uh, Asian. Okay. I think you guys are right there, number three. The Jews, number three spot, because y'all get into a whole bunch of other bullshit. There's not that many of us, though. There's way less I, Jews than... No, 100%. Yeah, by, yeah. by GDP and by population, you guys are fucking, like, outstanding, you know, outliers. Right. Then it's the white people in the middle. Okay, now, the black and browns are bottom two groups. Black and brown. His, well, black and Hispanic, yeah. Yeah. Because you already said brown. But, and Indian. but the most embarrassing stat there is... You're a fucking privileged white person in America, and you're in the fucking middle. It's disgusting. You got education available to you, healthcare available to you, fucking lawyers available to you, banks available to you. You can walk in anywhere, nobody fucking, for, and you still couldn't fucking. So you're saying all these people are wasting their. You heard him. You heard him. Disregard that dude, Vlad, that Bernstein Bear talking and all that, you know, stuff about. With the, with the Bernstein Bears, they, they did absolutely nothing. That's a whole nother topic. They're not special. But did you hear what Grant Cardone said? Did you hear what that white man said? It's pitiful for a white man to be just middle class, to not be successful. Everything is available to the white man, and you still couldn't make it. you still just an average dude. You're right in the middle. America was made and created by white men so that white men can thrive and be successful. Listen to him. Here you go. Like this, okay? It goes, brown are the wealthiest income earners and asset owners in America. Brown meaning what? Uh, Indian. Indian, okay. Then it's uh, Asian. Okay. I think you guys are right there, number three. The Jews, number three spot, because y'all get into a whole bunch of other bullshit. There's not that many of us, though. There's way less Jews than... No, 100%. Yeah, yeah. By, by GDP and by population, you guys are fucking, like, outstanding, you know, outliers. Right. Then it's the white people in the middle, okay? Now, the black and browns are bottom two groups. Black and brown, his, well, black and Hispanic, yeah. Yeah. Because you already said brown, but, and Indian. But the most embarrassing stat there is you're a fucking privileged white person in America, and you're in the fucking middle. Hmm. It's disgusting. You got education available to you, healthcare available to you, fucking lawyers available to you, banks available to you. You can walk in anywhere, nobody fucking for, and you still couldn't fucking. So, you're saying to all these people so young black women or black women, period, understand that this here will keep a lot of these sisters from getting chopped up and tossed in rivers and all this other stuff that these Brad thuggies are doing to them. Race in America is real. If that white dude who was sending a DM or whatever, 
that you think you're going to talk to or who shows some interest, if he's not successful in America, he doesn't already have a career, solid career, a car, a condo, a house, you know, money saved up, things like that. And he's not successful as a white man in America. You may be getting chopped up. That's just how it is. If he ain't even at least presenting middle class of white America, okay, you can't use it. See, here's the thing, the mistake a lot of people make. You can't use the same parameters to judge men as a white man and a black man. You can't even be like, okay, well, he has a job. Uh, well, you got to ask what kind of job as a white man, what kind of job this white dude got. Okay. Because they're allowed to have a job and still be a felon or a, even a junkie. You can't even compare a white man in America who America was made, teller made to be successful for him to somebody whose great grandparents were slaves. You can't do that. You know, you have black men and black people out here whose great grandparents were sharecroppers and things like that. You can't take a white man and say, OK, well, Hunter works at the post office. And Darius does, too. So it's the same. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Hunter's not successful. Darius, as a black man working at the post office, and I'm just using the post office as an example, people, he can be successful. The black man who's driving the waste management truck, he can be successful. He can be an honorable, stand-up, successful Black man, you know, doing that. But a white man, no, not the same. You can't compare the two. You can't compare a black man whose great grandparents were probably slaves or sharecroppers, you know, to this white man who had everything laid out for him. It could be dangerous, okay? Everything was tailor made for him to be successful. Everything, you know? All he has to do is stay from getting high. And I mean too high because even getting high, they do, you know, are still getting opportunities. All he have to do is take a bath, stay from being a junkie, and they're going to at least be middle class. At least. So if the white dude that's sending you a message is saying something, you ain't that. If he talking about, oh, 28, 29, you know, 30 and up. He, he don't have a house and all this other stuff and properties and, you know, things like that. You're with a bum and possibly a killer, and he may be chopping you up. These dudes got the banks for loans. They got the car dealerships for the lower interest rates. They got every union, pipe fitters, sheet metal, electricians, construction, carpentry, masonry. They have every union put in place for them to be successful, you know. And if they can't, just like Grant Cardone said, as a white man, just middle class is pitiful for one of them. You know what I'm saying? A white man can't be saying, I'm in between jobs. In your case, you probably got a guy that's talking about, oh, I need to come over there. You might be getting chopped up. It's not the same. And I'm not saying settle for a black bum either. But it's not the same. You can't, just like the, the, this white man right here, it's not the same. Okay. So what I'm saying is this, man, at the end, I'm calling for all you old, miserable, burnout, failure to take responsibility for your actions and your life and your decisions, platforms with black women, regardless of where they're from. I don't care if they're from America, Africa, Brazil, an island, whatever, all of them, because there's a lot of them on these, making these platforms stop doing this to confuse these black youths, these young black women. OK, because now you see it's getting them chopped up. It may not be all your fault that they have this sickness called Caucasian European hypnosis, but you are preying on it. You're preying on them with this. You know what I'm saying? And it's getting them hacked up. You know what I mean? You're old already. You already lived your life. If you want a white man, go get one. Go be happy. OK, and it's kind of weird that your relationships, you know, with these white men have to be on these platforms anyway. That's usually a proof. That's usually proof that he really hates you and you know it. So you're just trying to hold on to something, you know, 
oh, let's show these black people this, that we this, 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 and that. They show, they say, you know, that's what a lot of that is based off of. These two people together talking about, you know, black men and black women and just hating other black people. That's usually what their relationship is based off of anyway. The black person is typically 90% of the time going to be a fl- the flunky in any inter- interracial relationship, black women or black men. 90% of the time, the black person is usually going to be the flunky, okay? Stop putting that information out there for them, man. Stop putting it out there. And for people that's going to say, oh, well, the black men do it too? Okay, well, there's plenty of videos on this channel, and there's plenty of places that you can go on social media that you have people dedicated to just showing what black men are doing, and that's all they show. That's all they show. It's plenty of channels. So if you want to go find it, go find it. It's easy to find. It's plenty of channels and platforms that only show what black men are doing that is bad or the black women or whatever, this, this, and that. Okay? Plenty of it, if that's what you want to see. I got enough stories here about the buffoonery and the coon sellout buck dancing black, black men as well and the things that they have done and are doing. But what I'm talking about here. Is I need you to stop promoting this ignorance and this dumb mess, promoting this to these young black women because it's getting them chopped up easy.